Ah, hello friends, Perez Hilton here, and I just got home from the Taylor Swift Reputation Stadium Tour, and I wanna make a reaction video to the show and also share some huge, and I'm not exaggerating, huge news that Taylor Swift shared exclusively with me, and she didn't say off the record, but before I get to that, I wanna share this, which Taylor sent to me many a year ago. It says, my darling Perez, thanks a million, love Taylor. She sent this to me after Speak Now, her album, debuted to over a million copies in its first week on sale in America. I have been a long time, since day one, Taylor Swift fan and champion. I've gone to all of her tours, from the Fearless Tour to the Speak Now Tour, to the Red Tour, to the 1989 Tour, and now the Reputation Stadium Tour. So I have a lot of thoughts, I have a lot of perspective, I've seen a ton of shows, and before I get down to the acts and the songs, the thing about a Taylor Swift show is that she leaves you with this feeling. It's almost bigger than the music. She just makes you feel so good. And that's something real special that not many, I don't even know any other artist that makes me feel quite this way. Like she makes me feel like I'm awesome. She makes me feel so truly, genuinely, deeply appreciated that I'm there. And she makes me feel so connected to her and to everybody else there. The fans at a Taylor Swift show have changed and grown as she's changed and grown. There's a lot more diversity in the audience now. It's not just young girls, although I kind of do miss the hysteria of like the Speak Now tour, especially, or the Fearless tour as well. But the Speak Now tour, I feel like that was like peak hysteria and like literally everybody in the arena singing every lyric to every song. But the fabulous thing too about growing and evolving and maturing is like not only were there so many different kinds of people at the Taylor show at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, but there were so many families going as families, so many young kids. I took my son with me for his very first concert ever. And I spent a lot of time just watching him watch the show and, and, and watching everything wash all over him and just experience it in his eyes. Like he... Loved it. He loved it. He loved it. He loved it. And he got to meet Taylor and she was so lovely. We spoke a lot about many things. I'll get to that all at the end because I'm going to make you wait for it. And, and it is good news. And a lot of things we spoke about. Um, she, she was so generous with her time. But I like to keep it honest and real. I liked the 1989 tour a lot, but that was a show that was put on in both arenas and stadiums. The Reputation Stadium Tour, which is called that for a reason, is just a stadium show designed for stadiums across the world. So it's a lot like the 1989 tour, but bigger and better. And that's actually one of the thoughts I had. Like, in many ways, Taylor has been putting on the same show over and over again. Like, there are certain things that she does that you've come to expect and want and appreciate from a Taylor Swift show. Although, I didn't get any hairography. She's grown out of her hairography phase. I miss the hairography. <laughs> she used to give us amazing hairography, but she got rid of the hairography and now she's giving us choreography. Ah! My gosh, she gave us so much choreography, more than ever. I mean, she never really did choreography before. She would do movement, but now it was straight up choreo and so much of it and just the scale of it all was so massive and special. Like, 
More dancers than ever before. Bigger screens than ever before. More, more, more. And one of the things, too, that I loved about this tour is it didn't just rely on the screens, which were ginormous and super cool and did a lot of really amazing things. Like, the screens were so high-tech, it wasn't just showing you video, but they would also transform the stage so that it looked like it was another place. Like a, an industrial set or, um, you know, clearly when, when it's the desert and you're seeing nature, <laughs> you know you're not there, but... Like the industrial set, it looked like it could have been an actual set. It was so cool. But what I loved, too, about this show is it also had a lot of big props. And 1989 did not have quite as many as this one did. This one had a lot of big set pieces. In addition to the huge set and the videos, my favorites were this, like, seesaw almost contraption and at the very end too another huge set piece was um like a found a fountain it was a fountain and with real water it was so cool and she had not one but two different vessels that carried her over the stadium floor she flew over and i've always paid attention to the details and taylor swift has always been so good about the little things. Like I remember in the Speak Now tour, she had stage hands for this country porch segment dressed up as like country stage hands in costume. Tonight, instead of throwing out confetti, she threw out these very special collectible confetti moments. I know what it says. Taylor Swift. Or it just says Taylor Swift. T Swift. Taylor Swift. Over and I just ate. Sorry. Um, but she pays so much attention to details. And even tonight, like, she had all these different colored microphones and differently cool mics. And each of the contraptions underneath it, it said rep. Like, even the bottom of her flying vessel. Every little detail was thought out. Um, yeah, you know, we got some we got some great music. Got, the arrangements were phenomenal. She's starting to do a lot of medleys for her older songs, but I appreciate that. You know, she did, I think, almost the entire new album, but she did give us a lot of older material. Um, heavy on 1989, but some other songs. Like... Uh, and I'll get to the moments in a second, but like when I heard should have said no, I lost my mind. I was like, ah, 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 screaming. <laughs> like that's one of my favorites. And it's the song that I fell in love with because when I saw her do should have said no, at, I think it was the ACM awards and she had the water and she ripped off her outfit. That's when I knew she was a superstar and going to be huge. I just knew, I knew it. And she, has lived up to that. I mean, this, I think, well, I don't know. I would say this is tied with Speak, no, I think Speak Now is still my favorite tour, just because there was more of an element of surprise. Like, for Speak Now, she had upped her game from the Fearless Tour. And I'm like, whoa, like, where did this come from? Like, I remember for the Speak Now Tour, she had a quick change that was like 30-second quick change underneath a bell. And the balcony was flying. And she had a B stage where she would do a cover every night. And everything about that show was magical. So this is my second favorite of all time Taylor tour, but pretty close to the Speak Now tour. Um, yeah, let's get into it. The beginning was great. I mean, the band is so tight. The music was great. Her star quality is like next level off the charts. Like she just knows how to use her body, her instrument, like, her stares, the way she stares at you, and you can see it all because her cam the cameras are on her at all times. She is so masterful at what she does. Um, 
We had two special guests at my show, Troy Savon, who did My, 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 and Selena Gomez, who sang Hands to Myself with Taylor. And I actually got to say hi to Selena. Check this out. She was sitting right by me. Like, I wanted to sit as close as possible, so I sat, like, in the sixth row. But a lot of celebrities were seated way behind me in this, like, box for their security or safety or whatever. But I was like, no, put me as close as possible. And after Selena was done performing, she sat in front of me. So then at the very end, as we were leaving, I said, hey, and we had a hug. And I was just so happy to see her. And she got to meet my son. And it was awesome. Um, I don't think I need to go into every single song. I think my favorite segment, though, was... Uh, what's dubbed Act Two with Look What You Made Me Do, Endgame, and Keen of My Heart. That just was like so grandiose and epic. It was almost like Egyptian with gold and really special and awesome. And the drums, like it was also massive and grand. I loved it. But then she also has the ability to like bring it back and gave us a full on acoustic segment where she did all too well. <laughs> I was so excited because she did Red last night and I love All Too I like Red too, but All Too Well is my jam. She did the abbreviated version. <laughs> um, yeah, the finale was awesome. Like, I like this finale better than the last finale. It was just, uh, uh, this show was way better than 1989 and I thoroughly enjoyed 1989. And um, what else? I'm so glad I went. All right, on to the news. I got to speak to Taylor. We spoke about parenting and me being a dad and how actually that has been great for my career because before kids, I would be um, very picky and choosy and judgy and turn down a lot of opportunities. And And I said that kids, you know, forced me, or not forced me, but now I say yes to a lot more, like Joan Rivers, you know? If there's money, I'll take it. I don't care if something's lame or this or that or the other. Um, like Millionaire Matchmaker was the example that I gave her. Or Celebrity Big Brother. I had been asked to do both of those shows a long time ago. And I turned them both down. But then after I had kids, I went back and I'm like, hey, are you still interested in me having this or doing this? We talked about anxiety. And I expressed how kids also gave me anxiety. And she's like, welcome to the club. And I was surprised to hear that, that Taylor Swift has anxiety. Like, I was really moved by that. You know, people that, I think perfectionists or people that are control freaks oftentimes probably are prone to anxiety. So, um, Oh gosh, she may watch this, but whatever. I like to be honest. I wanted to say that I would love uh, at least some country songs on the next album or like a full on return to country or whatever. I don't know. I don't think she will give us a return to country the next album, but maybe like two songs would be nice. But what I did say to Taylor was I would love it if the next album had a song uh, called 30. To keep up the continuation, you know, she had 15, she had 22, and I feel like the next album should be 30. Because she turns 29 in December. So I was assuming that the next album would be out December 2019. Around that time, we'd have 30. That would be like two years after the, the, the Reputation album. But here's... The big news. She's like, oh, well, the, the next album will definitely be out before I'm 30. What? The next album will definitely be out before I'm 30? So, um, the great news is we've just got confirmation that we're not gonna have to wait as long as we did for Reputation for the next album. I mean, technically, she could release the next album November or, dis or, or or October or even September of 2019 and she won't be 30 then. But we rated repu for reputation three years. So this one will come to us most likely a little under two year time. 
<laughs> yeah, boy, giving you the scoop and the exciting news. It was such a great night. Thank you, Taylor. I love you like family. I mean it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you also subscribe and follow my family, The Perez Hilton YouTube channel. I've posted on there my son's reaction to look what you made me do and the, the epicness of it all and the snake moment. Um, also, follow me on Instagram, The Perez Hilton and Perez Hilton. Get a personalized video greeting from me on Cameo or directly at bookcameo.com slash Perez Hilton. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, share this video. And of course, if you're not following me yet here on this channel, hit the subscribe button. Mwah.